Welcome to the Music Licensing Online Course. My name is Jesse, and I'm gonna guide you through the process of learning how to get your songs, your tracks, placed in today's most popular TV shows, movies, and commercials. It's absolutely possible for you, and you can create a full-time income with TV film music licensing. And how do I know that? Well, I've personally been doing it for the last 10 years. It's been my absolute dream job. I work for my home studio and I get to create the kind of music that I wanna create and then I get to see it placed on TV and in commercials and in movies and I get paid for it. So it's an absolutely beautiful industry to be a part of. I wanna share with you all of my secrets for how I was able to pull this off um, and how you can absolutely do it yourself from your home studio as well. And it absolutely is the music industry's best kept secret. Most producers, most musicians, most bands out there have no idea that this is even an option or an avenue that's available to them in their music career. So I wanna definitely, first of all, just expose you to the side of the industry and maybe uh, have you think about adding this to your business plan, to your strategy for how you wanna create full-time income with your music. So without further ado, let's get started. I have to start this presentation with a bit of bad news. I'm sorry about that, but I have to be honest with you. 95% of all artists never really achieve the success that they want. And this isn't any secret because if you talk to most producers, most musicians, most bands, are most of them making it? Are most of them creating income from their music and getting the fans and the exposure and the attention that they really want? No, there's that stereotype out there, unfortunately, that producers and musicians are broke. And that's because for the most part, they're not seeing the, uh, the success and the results that they really were hoping that they would see when they got ambitious in the start of their careers, right? It's just a sad fact of reality, but there's a reason why that 95% are failing. So if you feel right now that you're a bit frustrated with your career, you're not seeing the results that you want, you're not seeing the success, and maybe you feel like there's like an invisible clock behind you that's ticking down the the days and the hours to the day where maybe you're gonna have to give up on music and just settle for the day job or just, you know, sort of hand in your quitting card, basically. Please watch the end of this video till the end of this video because I think you're gonna find that there absolutely is hope and an absolutely beautiful, uh, very profitable uh, pathway for you with music licensing. It does require a certain kind of mindset, but I think you can get out of this 95% stereotype by following the guidelines that I give to you, okay? The 5% that do succeed, that are making music their full-time income, they do it because they exploit every available avenue of creating income from their music, okay? So the 95% are probably looking at selling just singles, downloads, they wanna tour, they you know, they wanna do the sort of traditional artist route uh, path and they wanna sell merchandise and all that kind of stuff. So they're kinda of only thinking about how they can get sort of famous, right? And blow up in a viral sense online to then sort of start selling their music and their, um, their ticket sales essentially to the mass public. So that is absolutely one way to create a lot of income in the music business. Um, but there are other avenues and other actually much more lucrative uh, places that you can take your music that not only can make you more money, but it can actually get you more exposure than those traditional paths that most artists and bands are taking. So if you're interested, then please keep watching. This course that you're watching right now is gonna put you on the path to do two things that you're probably not doing now. Okay, number one, make more money, right? And number two, get more exposure. If you're making enough money right now and you feel like you got enough exposure for your music career, you can X out of this video. This course is probably not gonna be for you because you're probably already getting the results that you want. However, raise your hand right now if you could use more money or you could use more exposure for your music. Okay, everybody's hand should have gone up. You absolutely are probably looking for more of these things to actually get you to that full-time income point. If you feel frustrated because your career is not blossoming in the way that you want or as fast as you want, I will tell you right now, it's not due to any lack of talent, hustle, or dedication on your part, okay? It's not because you probably don't have amazing music. I'm sure you do have incredible, beautiful music that you pour your heart and soul into and really uh, challenge yourself to make as strong as possible. I know that you put yourself under that kind of pressure. I know that you hustle hard. You're doing the social media thing. You're trying to promote yourself. You're trying to get the word out about your music. And you're certainly dedicated to your art. I mean, how many hundreds or thousands of dollars have you invested in the equipment and the time, uh, in the studio and in your home, you know, just trying to get your music out there to the world. So you have all of those things covered. So 
and when you don't know why you're not succeeding, it can definitely make you feel even more frustrated because you don't have that sort of missing piece as to what's not really working. How come it seems like you have all the talent, it seems like you have the hustle and the dedication and the drive, and you seem to have a sort of business mindset about it, but it's still not working. So what's missing? We're gonna talk about that. The internet, for sure, is the biggest cause of change in our world in the last 20 years, and it has definitely caused the music market to radically change, okay? So the industry that maybe you grew up in or maybe that you are used to is not the industry that's happening right now. So the industry right now has radically transformed, and you need to learn how to adapt your business mindset and your strategy to accommodate all the changes that have, been, that have been happening and are continuing to happen every single year. And as you notice, as time goes on, those changes are happening faster and faster and faster. It's almost hard to keep up with all the changes happening with entertainment and music and the methods for music distribution, right? So you need to update your uh, thinking and your evolution about how this industry is working and how it's actually um, carrying itself out right now. Because right now, this is what's happening in the music market. So there's more competition. So you might be right now what I call in the social media rat race. You're chasing fans on all the platforms. You're trying to get people to listen to you. You're trying to get likes and subscribers and emails and all of that stuff, right? And it's just like a never-ending fight. You're always running up against the wall. You're getting disappointing uh, interactions from your fans and from people. And you just can't seem to break through to get a viral hit or get that buzz um, to feel like you're making a difference with all the work that you're putting into it, right? Well, that's obviously because everybody and their grandma can also jump on every platform that you're on and crowd out the market for you. So it's almost like now a very, imagine yourself, you're in a big uh, stadium and you're sitting there with your sign saying, hey, check out my music, check out my music. Now imagine 80,000 people rush into the same stadium as you and they are holding their signs. Check out my music, check out my music. How about mine? Can anybody even hear you at that point? You are invisible, right? Like there are too many people in there all shouting over each other, all trying to get the attention of the consumers that are out there. Now here's the even bigger problem and the bigger thing of how the music market has changed. Those consumers looking for that music they're less likely to buy music today than they ever have been in the history of mankind, right? Thanks to, you know, back in the 90s with Napster and now with social media and other platforms and streaming services, consumers, especially the younger consumers, do they really feel like they need to fork out 10 bucks for an album anymore? Less and less likely, right? If anything, they're getting their music for free on SoundCloud, YouTube, other social media networks or they're paying a small amount for a streaming service, yeah, five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, and that's getting them unlimited access to any type of music and any type of song they want. So you can see now something broke, right? The industry has broken in a way where what used to work, what used to make music money for artists like you and for bands and producers, doesn't work anymore. So you need to update what you've been thinking about this industry and change perhaps or alter slightly your approach to this business so you can start to take advantage of the new methods of making money with your music, okay? Let's play a fun little game. What do all of these artists on the screen in front of you have in common? Now, you've probably heard of most, if not all, of these artists, right? What's the one thing that ties all of these artists together? Well, I'll spoil it for you. Every single one of them got their break with a TV placement, okay? You've only heard of these bands and these artists because they got the exposure first through the TV film licensing business. That is powerful information and, and a powerful story that you, you yeah, literally, I have to repeat it twice. You would not know, and I'll go back here, you would not know the names of these bands. You probably might be a fan of some of these bands. You would not even know who these people are unless they didn't get these TV placements first, okay? So that's how powerful this industry ha is. It can absolutely break the careers and, and give the buzz to these bands and artists and possibly you in the future because you gotta realize who's watching TV? Everybody, everybody watches TV and streaming services, okay? So it's absolutely a very powerful platform that you should be thinking about getting your music onto so you could possibly become the next Imagine Dragons, etc. right? The Fray they had their How to Save, Save a Life track on Grey's Anatomy. Uh, Imagine Dragons had their song It's Time actually covered by Glee and The Voice. And so because of that cover, people were like, well, who did the original song? Boom, people now are hooked into them. They're the biggest, uh, you know, basically pop rock band uh, on planet Earth. So 
they got their break this way. Feist uh, had her track one, two, three, four on an Apple iPod. It was a Nano commercial actually many years ago. That put her on the map. Uh, Snow Patrol, they did another Grey's Anatomy track. Grey's Anatomy broke a lot of artists, actually. Um, the Lumineers, they did Ho Hey on a show uh, Heart of Dixie. And Christina uh, Perry did Jar of Hearts. Uh, it was also another cover for you, So You Think You Can Dance. And, of course, then she did the, um, the Twilight uh, movies, right? She had the theme song for the Twilight movie. So this is powerful stuff that absolutely puts artists and bands and producers on the map. So I want you to look at these artists and realize... They did something that worked, right? And if they're successful with it and it absolutely was a proven uh, strategy for them, why shouldn't you be looking at this avenue to get exposure for you, your music? It absolutely should be something that you're thinking about adding on to your uh, music career. So let's talk about TV film music licensing. Um, it is, if you weren't aware, a multi-billion dollar industry. I had to capitalize that because people think, oh, it's multi-million. No, billion with a B, okay? You've probably heard the stories of how many millions of dollars a uh, 30 second Super Bowl ad costs, right? Multiple millions of dollars. So there is advertising money out there to be had, right? So there's just a lot of money floating around in this industry where TV is one of the biggest markets just on planet Earth, not to mention movies, Hollywood, commercials, promos, all that kind of stuff, right? So all of these networks, all these platforms, everybody who's making content, uh, video content, they all need music. So it's a huge industry. It's a, it's a booming industry and it's growing actually every single year. Uh, for the past, uh, I think, three or four years, I've been noticing that uh, the reports that come out for the annual revenue is growing every single year. So it's a great time to get started. There is a huge current need for licensable music in TV shows, movies, and commercials. Okay, so you need to realize that the good days are not behind you and it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, I probably should have got started 10 years ago like Jesse did. No, that the need and the, and the growth of this business is only getting bigger. So right now is the time to get involved in this business. Don't think that you've missed out on some sort of golden age. Right now is the golden age and even beyond because we're getting more and more uh, places to license our music. So the opportunities are only growing every single year. So when you want to, like let's say you're a TV station, you want to license a big, uh, you know, popular track that was on the charts. Licensing from that A-list -A -A artist is very expensive because most artists, they have their labels, they have their publishing deals, um, and they're usually going to have to negotiate at least $100,000 to even use the track, okay? So that's a very expensive expensive proposition for a TV show or a movie to, to use. Now, sometimes they do pay that, and you've heard those popular uh, artists get those placements, but there's this other very well-kept secret part of the music uh, licensing business that nobody ever talks about and nobody even knows even exists. So the fact that you're watching this video, you're finding out that this is something that 95% that of producers that fail probably don't even know is an option for them, okay? Stay-at-home producers like you and I, we can supply the industry with our music and create full-time income. So instead of them having to pay $100,000 for you know, a Beyonce track, they can come to you and say, can you make us a track that's in the style of a Beyonce track and we'll pay you less than $100,000, but still a lot. And we save money, you get your track placed in the TV show or whatever the opportunity is, and you do enough of these opportunities and you can create full-time income. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that beautiful? And isn't it crazy that you didn't even know that this side of the business existed? You probably up until this point thought that, oh no, you have to be like an A-label, A A-list uh, artist, or you have to be like, you know, Hans Zimmer, or Danny Elfman, or some big massive composer with all these relationships to get placements in TV shows, movies, and commercials. <clears throat> BS. You can do it from where you are right now, from your home studio. You can absolutely do that. But let me tell you about it what you're going to have to do to be able to qualify for this to make sure that it actually could be something you could um, uh, benefit from, okay? You can only do this if you can create tracks from a home studio. So if you have a home studio, you have a home computer with, you know, a DAW software program on it, great. You know, Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, uh, Studio One, even Fruity Loops, anything that can create tracks, you're a player in this business. I'm, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you even have just a laptop with headphones. If you can make very high quality music with your home setup, you're a player, you're in, okay? You can absolutely be competitive in this industry. And also, if you can start to learn how to produce tracks that are geared towards the TV film licensing industry, they are, when you produce music for this side of the business, it is different from just creating your own original artist music or trying to create a track for an artist or a rapper to you know, get on. 
you need to create what they call is uh, production music. So basically music that's useful for all of these networks and programs that you see in front of you. So we're gonna talk about that in this course later on. So please stay tuned to make sure that you're not creating the wrong kind of music. You need to learn how to create the most useful and licensable music so that you get more placements and ultimately more money and of course, more exposure. If you wanna learn the secrets for how I did this, how I pulled this off, how I created full-time income for myself, which I've been doing this for the last 10 years, then you need to keep watching this video. I do appreciate your time. I know that it's valuable. and I know that this is time you could be producing music, but I think if you invest in staying through to the end of this video and to the, end, to the uh, end of this course, you're gonna look back and be so thankful that you got yourself educated on this side of the business. And I would like to right now start to tell you exactly how I did it, how I pulled this off. I had a day job just like you have, okay? I had very limited time. I was working on an, at night, on the weekends. I made a lot of mistakes, partnered with a lot of bad companies, did things the wrong way, made very unlicensable music. And I stumbled my way through this business, but I started figuring out how to do it and once I started creating that um, incredible full-time income through those uh, royalties that I started earning and the upfront fees that I got it literally transformed my entire life like the fact that I was able to say I am a professional producer that's creating full-time income with my music it, I, I just I literally have no words for it it completely changed my entire life and I wanted to change your life. Imagine what that would feel like to have that confidence behind you that you were able to turn your music into a full-time uh, career, be able to tell maybe any doubters or haters in your life that don't think you're gonna make it. Nope, you guys were all wrong. I found a way and a path that absolutely put me on the map and got me exposure and got me that income to do this full-time. So please keep watching if you're interested in learning about this. All right, first of all, who is this guy who's yapping and yapping and yapping? Okay, I'll make this very quick. My name is Jesse and I am a music producer. I do rock and pop, mostly rock and pop. Uh, I work out of my home studio in San Bernardino. I have an iMac and I use Logic Pro 10, a couple of speakers, but most of the, music, uh, the money that I invest in my studio is in plugins and sound design and, and all that good stuff, okay? So do not have a multi-million dollar studio. I don't have any fancy setup at all. I have a system that I, basically what I say, it works, all right? I know how to use it and I can create great music with it. I can't read music, okay? I'm not some virtuoso rock star. I'm not sitting here crafting my tracks in this sort of classical way. I'm more of an ear producer. If it sounds good to my ears, I go with it. So I'm a much more kind of down and dirty sort of a producer where I don't get too technical about things. I just go with my gut, I go with my ears, I go with what feels right. And that's what's steered me through this entire career. So you don't have to be some well-educated or you know classically trained musician to be a player in this industry, okay? I've been making my living with TV film licensing since 2008. So again, over 10 years now. And I made tons of mistakes. So I'm gonna to try to make sure that you don't make any of those uh, the mistakes that I made by guiding you through this course so that you know exactly how to stay on that straight and really narrow path to get yourself closer to that full-time income as soon as possible, okay? Right now I have over a thousand tracks getting me hundreds of placements every quarter. In the screenshot you see that it says 3,179. Well that includes alt mixes of my tracks, so there's uh, multiple versions of songs when you send them into this, uh, this industry. So not only do you have your full track, but you'll have a tr uh, version of it that you know doesn't have any leads on it. You'll have another version that's just drum and bass elements. So we'll talk about that more in this course. But uh, right now of that 3,000, you can basically say it's about 1,000 tracks, a little over 1,000 tracks that are out there in the system right now every single day getting me new placements and also getting me paid for those new placements and for placements I made six, eight years ago, okay? So it's all over the place. It's literally like I have a spider network of tracks out there and companies that are actively trying to get me placements right now. And I'm gonna show you how to get all these companies to start working for you in that manner. And it's not magic. They don't do it out of the goodness of their hearts, okay? We're gonna talk about why and how they're incentivized to work for you and get you those placements. Some of my notable placements, this is definitely not the exhaustive list. I couldn't fit everything that I got placed on uh, into this um, presentation, but the bigger ones, American Idol, SNL, Karda Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Ford, Nike, Jack in the Box, Outback Steakhouse, those were all commercials. Parks and Recreation, that's the NBC show, America's Next Top Model, Access Hollywood, MTV Made, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When, I, when you've been in this business for 10 years, the list of placements you start to get are 
exhausting. So, but those are the more notable ones, just so you guys know that I've been in this industry for a long time and I've seen what works and seen what doesn't work. So um, I definitely have some credibility and some authority in this uh, side of the music business. And you might be thinking, why are you sharing any of this stuff with me? Okay, I'm sharing this with you because nobody shared this with me when I got started. So I wish somebody had pulled me aside and said, Jesse, I'm glad you're getting involved in music licensing, but you gotta watch out for a couple of things here, man. Like there might be some companies that might get predatory on you. They might want you to sign some bad deals. You also need to make sure that you're making the best kind of music, the most useful music for this business so you get the most amount of placements. I created a lot of music for the first couple of years of my career that sat on the shelf, got no placements, and they still to this day don't get any placements. So I wasted lots and lots and lots of time making music that's just not doing me any good. I wanna save you all that heartache and headache and just time wasting, okay, and make sure that you get closer to your goals without having to go through all the BS and garbage that I had to go to through. So I'm basically trying to pay this forward to the next generation of producers that wanna get into this business. So if you have ears to hear what I'm saying right now, I really think this is gonna be something that can save you time, energy, heartache, everything, okay? So let's talk about everybody's favorite subject. How do you get paid in the licensing business? I know that you're probably curious about this. It is one of the few segments of the music business where you get paid over and over again for the same work that you did maybe years ago. It's not like if you're a session musician, right? If you're a session musician, you show up, you do the gig for an hour or a live musician and you get paid for being there, doing the job and then that's it. Do you get paid again over and over again for that gig you did last th Tuesday? No, of course not, it's over. In licensing, you can actually get paid for uh, tracks that get placed in TV shows that air multiple times over and over again. Not only airing in the US, but then in other countries. We're gonna talk about that. In this business, you get basically two types of payments, okay? So you'll get upfront payments, which are a one-time fee, you get that paid once, but then the back-end payments, those are the ones that can be recurring, that can become uh, what they call mailbox money, right? It's the passive income that keeps pouring into your bank account every time your track gets played on a TV show, movie, or a commercial. The upfronts are also known as sync fees, and it's paid in exchange for permission to basically use your music in a piece of video production. They call it a sync fee because it's synchronizing your music to the video, right? It's putting those two things together, and they're gonna pay you a one-time fee on the upfront to say, thank you so much for letting us use your, uh, your, um, your music in our production. And the reason why they're paying you is because your music adds to the value of their commercial or TV show or movie or whatever it is. And if it's a very recognizable song, they pay a lot more for that because they want people to like whatever there is they're watching. Subconsciously, if you like the music you're hearing behind a promo, you might actually like the TV show as well. At least that's what the advertisers are trying to uh, pull off when they put these uh, campaigns together. Um, now the back end money, that is the powerful stuff, okay? So those are the performance royalties that you get paid every time your music is aired on a TV show, movie, commercial, or a radio station, okay? That's what the mailbox money is. Those are those recurring checks you get directly paid into your bank account um, every single quarter, as long as the tracks that you have out there are getting placed, right? And we're gonna talk about how to make sure that happens for you. And these royalties are getting distributed through performing rights organizations. Sometimes they're called PROs. You might, uh, may or may not be a member of one of those right now, but if you're not, uh, ASCAP and BMI are the only two that basically are gonna be available to newcomers in this industry. CSAC is a private company and they only accept applications. Um, and you probably have to have some royalties coming in already before you apply to them. But for right now, if you're not a member with any PRO, you do need to choose if you wanna get with ASCAP uh, or BMI, but you do need to be a member of one of them to collect these royalties um, in your bank account for getting your TV placements, okay? Now let's talk about the best part, because there are so many great parts of this business, your, your mind is gonna literally just blow up here in a second. So syndication, this is the golden term of the licensing business. Syndication, you might know what that is. It's when a TV show airs for years and years and years. Think Seinfeld. How many years has Seinfeld been airing on TV and how many different networks in different countries has that show been airing? Since the 90s, all right? It never went off the air. It's been playing the entire time, okay? Huge, huge, huge royalties. That's when you're talking about getting income from one show for 30 years, 40 years, right? This is what I'm talking about, where you can do work once and get paid for the same work over and over again. Not gonna really find that so much in many other parts of the music industry. When US shows get aired overseas, right, in other countries, 
you also get paid the international royalties as well. We talk about that. So when Seinfeld goes to you know Italy and they transcribe it into Italian, yes, that composer is still getting paid every time that happens. It's happened to me. I have my Keeping Up With Their Kardashian uh, placements. I got paid for those placements here in the US, but that show has taken off in Germany and Sweden and Japan. And I get paid every quarter when that show is getting aired in those countries, okay? Um, you can work from anywhere too. Uh, you, uh, you can be at home or if you're traveling, right? If you're more somebody that kind of travels, as long as you have something that can create music, like sometimes just having that laptop with that program that you use and an internet connection, because really you just need to be somewhere where you can send your music to the people that'll get your music played. So there's a lot of freedom in this industry, right? If you're an artist, you really have to just be in the studio. You got to be touring. You got to be away from your family. There's a lot of like uh, cons to that side of the industry. But with music licensing, you can do it anywhere, literally from your home. Or if you're on vacation, you can still be making music, right? As long as you have the equipment with you to do it. And you can make the kind of music that you want to make, okay? Every single genre out there is licensable. Rock, pop, EDM, hip hop, orchestral, corporate, indie, folk, Latin, you name it, country, anything that you can think of, any kind of music that has been an, on a popular chart ever that uh, I, you could say a significant portion of any population has liked, there is a need and a purpose for it in the TV film world, okay? So you don't have to make cheesy jingles and crappy music that you're really not excited about. You could create the kind of music that you love, that you're passionate about, okay? Make, being a part of this business does not mean you have to sell your creativity down the drain and sell your soul and make music that you hate. Absolutely not. I've never done that for one day. I've created the music that I wanted to create, but this industry made me a stronger producer, a better producer, a more professional producer that served the needs of my clients and then got me full-time income, okay? Your music can be heard when, in this industry and in this uh, business by millions of people all over the world. So again, if you already have millions of people that have heard your music, you can X out of this video. You, I guess you don't really need this. But if you're looking to get this kind of exposure, we're literally like, you know, think of the Kardashians. How many millions of people are listening and watching that show, okay? That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about here. If you want to get that kind of exposure, this could be your outlet and your F and your avenue, right, to succeed. Remember that 5% of producers that do succeed, they look for all avenues. They are aware of other avenues of, of exploiting and making money off their music. So you need to be part of the 5% by taking advantage of this. And as you grow your catalog in this industry, like I have, I have the over 1,000 tracks that are out there, your royalties can start to grow exponentially, right? So the placements that you did last year start to earn you income for this year, and then the placements and the music that you got this year grow for next year, and et cetera, et cetera. And so it's like a snowball effect. It starts off like this, and then very quickly you see this thing massively start to grow, and your royalty checks start to double upon double upon double, okay? I'm not saying that in a theoretical way. This is what I have seen for my career. This is exactly what has been my personal experience and other producers' experience that have been in this industry. So I have a lot of authority and um, an expertise in this because it's what I've been living and breathing for the last 10 years. This is really all I've done, actually. I can't say I'm an expert on almost anything else on, on planet Earth, but when it comes to TV, film, music, licensing, this is the stuff that I know like the back of my hand, okay? So I want you to come back for tomorrow's video. Now, if you don't wanna wait until tomorrow and you're just super excited, uh, you can actually click on the link below this video right now and you can go instantly to day two's video. I'm gonna make that available to those of you that are really excited and wanna get started in this industry as soon as possible. However, I know it's a lot of information, so if you wanna wait until tomorrow, I will send you tomorrow's video to your email inbox. So make sure you look out for it. If you don't see it within 24 hours, check your spam folder. Sometimes my email can land there, so just double check on that. If you don't receive it, you can email me and I'll give you my email address here in a second. But tomorrow, super crucial, how do you find music libraries that you can get a licensing deal with? Music libraries are the companies that will get your tracks out there into TV shows, movies, and commercials and can work for you passively while you're working on music and they will be out there trying to get you placements out there so you're probably going to want to know how do you find these people and how do you partner with them we're going to talk about all of that tomorrow okay so do not miss tomorrow's video or you can watch it now if you click on that button below and you can always email me with any questions if you didn't get the video whatever it is 
jesse at syncmymusic.com. I love hearing from brand new um, uh, students and students that have been around for a long time. So uh, there's no dumb questions and there's really no reason why you should be shy. Uh, I promise I don't bite. I love hearing from people who are excited about this business or just curious whether or not it might be a good fit for you. Uh, you know, trust me, this is not an industry that works for every single producer and every single musician or band. Uh, if you're feeling like at this point in this video that this could be something that could really work for you that you're really excited about and you can see, like you can visualize the future in front of you getting this kind of exposure, earning this kind of income, then I do en encourage you to stick it out through this, um, this, uh, this course that you're getting here for free because I am going to basically make sure that you're not making any of those mistakes that I made. I'm gonna tell you what those mistakes are and ensure that you are on that straight and narrow path, like I said before, to full-time income as soon as possible and you don't get screwed over and you don't make music that just sits on the shelf like I did for a long time um, and that you can actually finally uh, prove to yourself that you actually do um, have full-time income from, from your music and you're actually able to create this beautiful, awesome uh, opportunity for yourself to support yourself, support your family, improve all the haters and negative people around you maybe that don't believe in what you're doing. Prove them all wrong, right? And absolutely find a path towards doing this uh, for your day job. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.